This Arlequino quest, hmm, hmm, it's an interesting one. It's a, it's a weird one. I'm not sure if Mihoyo releasing the animated short before the quest was the move here, because if you saw the animation, then it just, it killed all the mystery and intrigue about the story quest. Who's this little girl up? We already know. What's this dark hidden past of the house up? We already know. Oh my god, the knave is working with the doctor up. We already know. Who is Clarivy's friend Perry up? We already know. And so it's like, well, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure if that was the move. That's not to say we knew everything, however, because, you know, the only question that remained if you did see the animated short is how exactly is Claire V back, which we did. We did find out later on. In other news, I was completely wrong in my prediction that Childs and Arlequino's interaction would be a flashback. Clearly, I severely underestimated Childs when I said he's currently still recovering, which I mean, we saw him and he, he is still recovering. He just he just doesn't care. <laughs> He doesn't care, bro. Uh, the interaction between us three here was probably the highlight of the quest outside of the, uh, you know, the, the interesting final acts, we'll put it like that. If for no other reason than because it's so rare we see Harbingers interact with one another, so it's it's pretty cool. But with that said, the quest wasn't all bad. It let us in on the Fatui's future movements, including this mysterious Project Stuja. The last scene, however, yeah, like animation-wise, it was sick, and we got some badass moments. It's just... I don't, I don't know, bro. I, I, I'm, I'm like fine with them putting a soft cap on the traveler's power level. I suppose it's just, I don't, bro. Why, why this nigga doesn't use his fucking powers, bro? He, he has five elements, but he never uses them. It's, it just, it blew my mind that in this last fight scene, Arlequino the, <laughs> was the only one who used powers. <laughs> The, the one person who does not need to use her powers was the only one who did. It's, I just, bro, we'll talk about it later. It's, anyway, <laughs> let's recap and review the quest. It wasn't a super complicated quest, so this shouldn't take long, but eh, we'll see. The quest starts with us heading on over to Poisson, because it's the writer's favorite fucking area in the entire game, where by chance, we happen to run into Linny. Linny tells us most of the members of the House of the Hearth are currently in Poisson, due to something happening back at HQ. But before he can tell us, Arlequino appears and decides to tell us herself. She informs us there's been rumors of a ghost within the House of the Hearth and that she has decided she will investigate this matter. And in the meantime, she tells us to stick around but departs herself, to which Lenny decides to take this opportunity to introduce us to the other orphans because uh, you know, we've been excited to do that shit. Uh, we meet these two kids who, I mean, they, they, bro, these, these niggas are not, <laughs> they're not normals. <laughs> Uh, the little girl offers us some poisons and concoctions she's been working on, whilst the little fucking Jeffrey Dahmer here just says he will he will whack someone for us. <laughs> Lenny gives some backstory onto the pair, where we learn the little boy killed all his pets when he was younger out of curiosity, which led to his family abandoning him. Thankfully, the girl's backstory is a, a bit simpler, and she just she just likes concocting poisons and potions. I have a I know a group that really like her, uh, but they are dangerous to the point that father has banned her from testing them. We then meet this couple who are the only normal ones of the bunch. They just like uh, operas. Yeah, that's it. And there's also this uh, little thing. They want to leave the House of the Hearth. They don't state a tear, but their attitude towards the other members suggests as much. We then see Fremenet out and about, and given he lies like a puppy, Lenny quickly discerns something's amiss, to which Fremenet then <laughs> relents and reveals to us he's been hiding the Phantom Child. Fremenet says he's been hiding her for some time now, about half a month, and has no intention of handing her over to Father, given he doesn't want her to get whacked. And she's helped him save fellow members of the house, so he doesn't think she's bad. Lenny and Fremenet walk off to speak in private, whilst Clervy looks at us and ominously tells us darkness runs deep in this house, and no one can get out alive. We, we get to be a fly on the wall for Lenny and Fremenet's conversation, where Lenny is simply upset Fremenet didn't turn to him given their close bonds. The Traveler then pokes his head into their conversation and offers to stick around, because families are on their best behavior around guests. The gang then decides to deal with Clairvy on their own, separate of father, but are unsure how until Paimon suggests they try and fulfill Claire V's last wish, and she may disappear given she's a ghost. But as the caveat, this is all speculative on her parts, and results may vary. Uh, Lenny tells Fremenet they must keep this between the two of them, and decide to fist bump to make it official. And as the two of them go to fist bump, we suddenly see a third hand. Ooh! Uh, following Lynette's materializing out of thin air, she calls everyone in attendance an idiot. Reveals she too has seen Claire V around the house, and is joining in their plan, should they reject her. Oh, offer, and say offer, but 
she will embrace her inner 6 9 and reports the situation to Arlecchino immediately. <laughs> Needless to say, she's a part of the gang now. When we get to Claire V, Lenny presses her on how she joined the house, stating she isn't on the roster, to which she eerily replies that the people in charge aren't as nice as they look. The roster is never complete and never will be. She says some in the house are nothing more than test subjects, and the only roster they get put on is the one for execution. Lenny asks for a corroborating source out of the kid, to which she says ask Perry, who's her best friend and can vouch for her claims. No one recognizes the name Perry, as it isn't on the roster either, so they shift gears and instead ask Claire V what's her wishes, to which she says is to go outside and feel the sun. The group divides and conquers. Lynette and Fermine are responsible for trying to see if they can uncover who Perry is, and if there's any truth to Clarvy's claims. Meanwhile, Lenny will try and fulfill her wish and bring her outside, whilst we are responsible for keeping Arlecchino busy, because let's not forget, boys, this is, at the end of the day, an Arlecchino story <laughs> Should the knave start to suspect that something's going on, we should release a bird that Lenny hands to us that will alert him, and then we should just tell her everything. <laughs> when we head on over to Arlequina, we find her accompanied by a still recovering child who had returned to- well, you know, I should have said Tartaglia there. By a still recovering Tartaglia, <laughs> who had returned to Fontaine despite not being 100% to find his master Skirk. He asked Arlequino to aid him in this endeavor, but the two of them turned up nothing. Child then mentions an old man, who we now know is the rooster, informed child he's needed for something known as Project Stugia, which is something both the rooster and Regrader are heading up. Arlequino reveals she too is involved with Project Stugia, and as such, will be leaving Fontaine shortly. The attention then turns to us, as Arlequino inquires as to the purpose of our visit, to which we ask her questions, and I don't know, this scene was just like, it was so funny to me. We'd ask her a question, and then child would just be like, oh, yeah, good questions. <laughs> A little extra, like, why do you call yourself father? Huh, good question. I'd also like to know. I'd also like to hear the answer to this. Yeah, I don't know, I find that hilarious. Child's great. A child then casually drops, he heard from the rooster that Arlequino once betrayed the House of the Hearth, which in turn gets us thinking there might be some truth to Clarivy's claims. Arlequino presses Child on what else the rooster had to say, to which Child says she attacked other members of the house, and even her own family. She says it's true, but just, you know, phrased in a way that makes it seem more heinous than it really is, but has no intentions of clearing that up right now. She does, however, reveal she's not actually from Fontaine. It only said as much because it'd make her dealings in Fontaine much easier, which I mean, yeah, fair play. <laughs> but ultimately, if the primordial sea hit her, the only thing we'd get is a wet Arlequino. Child, the ever combat-hungry fiend he is, comments on how the house has duels, stating he likes the idea that disagreements can be resolved with a fight. Arlequino then adds, this is a new thing, as in the past, duels were done to the death. Child then shares about 13,000 stories of his siblings before departing. We meet back up with the gang where we find out Claire V just can't go into the sunlight. She sort of just gets a thousand yard stare whenever she gets close. We then go through a list of all past and present house members, including those who were executed. Making note of this guy with a scar on his face, he was a man who fell in love with a girl and tried to escape the house to be with her, but was caught, sent to father, and never seen again. Lenny expounds, these executions may seem cruel, but that's just how the rules are. The people in the house know far too much and cannot simply just leave, at least not with their life. <laughs> After going through all the names, they still can't find Claire V nor Perry. Fermine then states the atmosphere in the house has been odd recently, particularly when it comes to mm, Philol and Nantul, who even more than usual have been distancing themselves from the house. Fermine adds they've been having secret meetings recently and hypothesizes that they must have met with Claire v, who would have told them about the darkness in the house, which includes child experimentation and throwing kids into battlefields. Lenny then just randomly name drops Project Stusha, <laughs> uh, blaming all the recent happenings in the house on it. So Lenny says that while he doesn't know much, he knows it has something to do with the Fatui strategic plan moving forward. And because the House of the Hearth did a great job in grabbing the Gnosis, they get to play a role in Project Stusha. Lenny clarifies it's all a pain for the house, and they will end up being put in a dangerous position. Alakino agrees with this assessment, but is in no position to refuse, as the plan isn't unreasonable, and they've been putting a lot of funding into the house recently. Alinea is worried, as the house will lose a lot of members in the process, and what this whole thing actually is, 
is the rooster and regrader trying to reign in the house of the hearth as they aren't comfortable with an intelligence organization existing outside their control. Uh, the next night, we spot Clarity and follow her outside, where she tells us some more about this darkness in the house, stating every kid in the house is a tool to be exploited, and they're all expendable, including her. Those who are useful can stick around, but those who aren't are sent on over to Tavat's resident doctor <laughs> and handed a fate worse than death. We tell her the knave doesn't seem the type to do that, but according to Clarity, that's because we haven't met the real mother. We then ask Linny about if the knave has ever worked with the doctor. Linny states that while they may have some dealings as Harbinger in arms, there are lines that even Arlequino wouldn't cross. We go back to distract the knave some more, who then, <laughs> who then asks how we plan on distracting her without child being here. Uh, she knows everything that's going on and will step in when she feels like it, but then asks us to accompany her to the Palais Mermonia. The 28-year-old Arlequino then tells the at least like 1,000-year-old traveler, a good things comes to kids who do what they're told, so we should follow her. We then release the bird from earlier and head out. When we arrive at the Palais Mermonia, Arlequino goes over all the troublemakers in the house. Lenny, Lynette, Fermine, Fiolo, and Tuli. It says all punishments will be handed out equally, so there's no point in begging for Lenny, Lynette, and Fermine's lives. Arlequino that comes out as racist against the NPCs <laughs> is stating Linny, Lynette, and Fermine can keep their lives, whilst the NPCs, Fulio and Antuli, must pay. Which, I mean, I don't I, I don't know what, what happened to equality here, man, I guess. <laughs> NPC lives matter, man. What are we doing here? As she then hands back the bird we released earlier because she's God. We then meet Nerva Letts, and Arlequino foreshadows a big twist at the end using the flow of water on Earth as a metaphor, stating that not all rivers are destined to reach the ocean, but that doesn't mean they're meaningless, but rather, they are simply meant for a different destination. Nervalets adds, uh, While this is nice in theory, few will sip from a glass with tainted water, to which Arlequino tells him, Worry not, she will make sure that water is sparkling. The metaphor for those who still don't get it is that the kids in the house will take different paths in life, and that's okay. Nevertheless, however, points out that because of their fatuous background, they will have troubles intermingling with society, even if they no longer serve the house, to which Arlequino responds, Worry not, she will sever their connection, somehow. She then explains, should Nervalet accept her proposal, she will withdraw her forces from Fontaine and carry out no more missions unless absolutely necessary. Nervalet then clarifies that this will mean no more assassinations like this one. Right? Arlequino then says she has no idea what this nigga is talking about. A paper boy with a familiar scar on his face runs into us as we leave, apologizing. Arlequino then cops three papers off of him and he leaves. Uh, where have we seen this guy with a scar on his face before? Yeah, I've drawn a blank. Arlequino then says she will give Linny and the gang more time if the traveler does something for her. When the time is right, help the house of the hearth. And in return, She'll tell us about her connection to Clairvy. We agree, and she takes us to Ruins, where she starts off by telling us she killed Clairvy. And when we go, what? How could you? She goes, shut the fuck up, man. I got, I got, a, I got a story to tell here. <laughs> What's that writer's technique called in media race? Oh, yeah, that's a good, good way to use it. She says Clairvy was brought to the house by her real mother, Crucibina, also known as the previous knave. Crucibina never cared for her daughter and only brought her to the house to show she's impartial. How fucking virtuous you are. At first, Clarivy liked the house, but soon realized it was a nightmare. Duels to the death were commonplace, and should you survive the duel but be maimed or otherwise seriously hurt, you'd go right to Tivat's resident doctor. <laughs> uh, the story goes on. Arlequino tells us Clarivy then became friends with a pair wear, but never stopped trying to escape. For ten years she tried, and for ten she failed. Pear Ware then calmly suggested <laughs> <laughs> they kill Crucifix. <laughs> but Clarivy shoots this idea down, because while she claimed that Mother was a harbinger that they could never hope to best, in actuality, it's because she couldn't bring herself to kill Mother. You know, because it's her biological mother. That's yeah, great, isn't it? Don't you love a kid's love for their mother? Uh, so she chose freedom via death and decided to fight Pearware, fully knowing she'd die in a duel. A year after Clarivy's death, Pearware then kills Crucibina and got the new name of Arlequino from the Cryo Archon. Mind blown. Arlequino is prayerware. Crazy, huh? 
Our Lakino then answers the big question, what exactly is Clairvy and how is she back? Apparently, she's neither ghoul nor demon, but rather, when our Lakino kills someone, the flame leaves behind a shadow of those they consume. The chances of these shadows morphing into something sentient is low, but not zero, and thus we have Clairvy, an illusion born of the flame. However, Clairvy returned as a child, and in turn, her memories did too, so she doesn't know much. Clairvy's shadow is stuck in time, and the reason Clairvy can't step out into the sunlight is because in her mind, leaving the house of the hearth is impossible. She then plainly states she's gonna kill that fucking shadow. <laughs> <laughs> they sound like the Grand Wizard. The kids then arrive, and Ted Bundy sounds a bit too excited at the thought of witnessing a live execution. We also see Clairvy is among them, who conveniently found a little spot in the shade. She instantly recognizes Perry, and Arlecchino then asks John Wayne Gacy to report back what he's heard about Philol and Nantul, to which the boy snitches immediately. And it's just revealed the secret meetings they've been having are just them venting and wanting new lives for one another. Uh, for which they will coincidentally have to pay with their lives. <laughs> a small mutiny then arises, arguing father is being too cruel and that the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Arlecchino then says they can settle this dispute by dueling her. The Traveler, dull sword in hand, decides to join as well. The fight goes so-so. Eh, uh, despite currently wielding five elements, the Traveler decides to use uh, none of them. As a matter of fact, Arlecchino uh, was stated earlier, is the only person to use any type of elements, despite the other three here also having visions. Uh, uh, anyway, we get uh, Acherons, but instead of a black hole, it's a crimson moon. And then the 8 foot 4 Arlecchino then states that while the Traveler is strong, he's not strong enough to defeat her. Arlecchino wins the duel, but decides to, you know, offer a different form of execution, instead opting to have the traders drink some of her flames, or some shit like that, that will wipe away their memories of the house and the Fatui, which... I mean, I don't know why we didn't, like, lead with that, but... <laughs> I'm all for a happy ending. And we then tell Clarity of her story, and, and share with her our trips in other nations. Finally, as the head of the House of the Hearth and the Knave, Arlecchino officially expels Clarity from the house, which finally lets her able to feel the sun for the first time. And now, with her wish seemingly completed, she vanishes. Now, for all intents and purposes, Arlecchino's story quest ends here. <laughs> the final scenes are just like Lenny deciding he wanted to stay in the house because they had the option to leave, and Fremenet revealing he joined the house in the year between Clarivy's death and Mother's death. Yeah, I don't know. It's a nice wholesome quest, I guess, but I guess I was just looking for a different quest. <laughs> I wanted some more questions to be answered about Arlecchino, the curse, the Crimson Moon Dynasty, but we take what we can get. If anything, however, I will say I am excited to see how the likes of the Doctor and Capitano are dealt with, given the fight between us and Arlecchino wasn't particularly close, given it's later revealed she was just holding back during this fight, and it's still, we still lost this badly, so, at the very least, the future looks bright.